Hey, what's poppin' everybody? My name is Paul Liston Jr., a.k.a. Boy Green. I'm the New York Jets digital reporter for Heavy.com. And we're streaming live here on a Wednesday night, as we do on this channel every other week. The other week, so we were on the Buffalo Jet Fans YouTube channel. His description is down below. He'll be joining me in just a few minutes here. No matter where you're watching, feel free to dive into the comment section because this is a show by the people, for the people. We'd love to get to your comments throughout today's program. We're streaming live in three different places. The Heavy on Jets Facebook page. There are 30,000 New York Jet fans on my YouTube channel, youtube.com slash boygreen25, and of course, on Twitter as well, at boygreen25. Again, we try to get to as many comments as possible but if you want to guarantee, Joe Namath, guarantee your comment gets answered, make sure you do the YouTube Super Chat feature. You throw a little change in our tin cup, and we'll do a dance for you and give you a special shout-out here on the program. we got a lot to get to. Of course, we'll get into the latest QB chatter, How Could We Not? Uh, also, uh, we'll be diving into the latest with Makai Becton, which could be juicy and how big of an important piece he is to the puzzle for what the Jets could possibly be. Next season, we'll get into that as well. And Jets players, whether former or current, on the recruiting trail to bring new talent to the gas darn New York Jets, baby. I mean, it's spectacular. It's a, it's a lot of fun, and I'm looking forward to getting into all of that with each and every one of you. Let's uh, introduce a couple of people uh, here as we're uh, getting started. We have uh, R&R uh, or Yo-Yo uh, from Marty uh, jumping in. Sorry, the comments are coming in uh, quick and fast. Uh, we got uh, R&R. All this quarterback stuff is bananas. Have a great show. We look forward to it. Uh, Jets Carpetbagger. Hello, boy green dude. What's popping, baby? Love the channel. Love that El Soto. We've got a lot of stuff. Uh, coming on the channel. Also, like I revealed a few times in a few different places a week, we have a brand spanking new show that should be released er earlier, or excuse me, my words aren't working, later this week, a brand new show on the channel. Guys, stay tuned. This is exciting. There's going to be new brand, new imaging, new marketing, all kinds of things. It's going to look spectacular and some fun guests for this brand new show that will uh, be releasing uh, coming up later this week. Everything should be official. The official voiceover guy intros. Oh, baby, it's sexy, baby. And it's all things New York Jets, of course, as everything is on this channel. And the free way for everyone to contribute is by liking the video and hitting subscribe down below here on the YouTube. And you can check all the information. On the scrolling ticker, excited for all that as well. Now let's go to Prestige Shogun. Uh, Paul Boy Green back at it, baby. Hit that like button, you bet, folks. Let's see. Let's let's get like a roll call. Where are we at here? We've got El Soto, Jets fan from Goldsboro, North Carolina. I used to live in South Carolina, Goose Creek, South Carolina, Somerville, South Carolina. Shout out to my boy AJ Green, of course. So uh, I've I, I was all over down south on the East Coast. Uh, Vinny and the Jets, what's good, Paul? Bada bing, bada boom. Yes, sir. Uh, Hennessy Heisman gracing us with his presence. God, I love that avatar, baby. I love the old school logo, and the jersey is Krispy Kreme as well. Uh, Michael Lando, NYJ Jets fan four, Finger Lake Jets fan. We got them all in here, but the man of the hour is in, and that is the Buffalo Jet fan. Again, you guys can check out his channel down below. I was just perusing as I was grabbing his link to throw in so it'd be easier for you folks to subscribe over to him as well. He's got a lot of stuff cooking. He got the week off. So he's got to have Zach Rosenblatt on the show tomorrow. A couple of live videos already there. He's got a nice lineup where you go over like, oh, it's like, a, you know, you're in the bargain bin. Look at this video coming up. This video coming up. This video coming up. Very nice stuff. So let's bring him in. The Buffalo Jet fan. Wow, man, you got a lot cooking, my friend. Yeah, man. Uh, week off from the from the day job, so talking to some famous people, but none better than you, Paul Boy Green. None better than you. Yeah, yeah. Well, you know, we all try to do what we can do. <laughs> I mean, Buffalo. Let's uh, let's be honest. But I'm I'm looking forward though to uh, the Zach Rosenblatt conversation. That should be a lot of fun. I haven't talked to him in a few weeks. We had uh, for those who who don't know, my day job for me is sports talk radio. So we had a Zach Rosenblatt on every Tuesday throughout the season which was a lot of fun. I knew Zach before he jumped on the Jets beat, so it was cool to get him on this side of things. So it'll be great to catch back up with him on the Buffalo uh, Jet Fan channel, so that'll be coming up on the show tomorrow. Before we get into all the um, QB stuff, which is always a thing, of course, that we, we are required to do on this channel, I want to do the Makai Becton stuff because I think, it, first off, it'll freshen things up. We've been beating yeah. some of these QB conversations uh, like a dead horse, which, quite frankly, is inhumane. So let's try to do what we can to dive into some other spheres and uh, i'm going to throw the first one up here on the big board and this is makai becton giving us a check 
And before I even do that, I'll just say in general that, you know, we don't get many updates on the players outside of whatever they volunteer of their own information. There's no OTAs, no mini camp, no nothing going on right now. The players uh, are working out of their own volition. So it's kind of cool when we get a few updates here. And we'll go to the first one. Here's Makai Becton. We're throwing this on the big screen. This is, again, at Big Ticket 73, giving us a little snapshot here of what he's currently looking like. Slim Shady, as far as I'm con uh, concerned. And look at that. Y'all work out today. Your boy looking real swolioli. I know, I know, I know. So, wow, man, uh, what are your initial thoughts here of old, old Makai Becton looking all slim? I mean, he feels like, again, I, I don't know if there's a player that has a bigger impact outside of quarterback with how this season could go if a healthy Makai Beckner returns to the table, what this could possibly mean for the Jets. I mean, he's looking nice, perhaps the nicest he's ever looked, quite frankly. Yeah, I. so it's interesting. I told myself at the beginning of this offseason that I'm tr going to try to not to do the, like, Makai Beckton, how does he look, how much does he weigh, I'm not going to sure. get too, ex I'm just going to wait till I see you on the field. I did see that picture, and I was like, just when I thought I was out, <laughs> Throw me back in, right? <laughs> so right. I, I, you took the words right out of my mouth. Mackay Becton, besides quarterback, Mackay Becton is the single biggest wild card on this uh, Jets roster because even if they spend the 13th overall pick on a tackle, which I think they still sure. should do, almost if they if they don't trade pick 13 for Rodgers or whatever, you gotta think that's pretty much inked in for offensive tackle. I would hope, but the offensive tackle they take at 13 is not going to have. Uh, unless Peter Skronsky falls, maybe even if he does, I don't think they're going to have the ceiling that Mekhi Becton uh, does. Now, ceiling is only as important. That you got to be on the field, right? It's like with Zach Wilson. Like, of course. Ceiling. There's only so much you could talk about ceiling. But unlike uh, you know Zach Wilson or some other guys where you talk about that, the ceiling was evident. The dude was mauling people uh, as a rookie. So the Jets can't go into this season planning for Mekhi Becton to be a starter, obviously. But... He, he's a wild card man. If he can even just regain his form uh, as a rookie on the right side or the left side, it's a he's a huge difference maker for this Jets offensive line. I think you put it right there that from a Jets perspective, team building, roster construction perspective, I don't think you, you got to hope for the best, assume the worst. you yeah. got to assume that Mekhi Becton doesn't even exist really. And I, I don't mean any insult or slight to Mekhi. I'm saying this guy's played somewhere in the ballpark of 48 snaps over the last two calendar years. That's just the facts. That's what everything it says from a numbers perspective. So they have to assume he's not even there. And if and when he is, it's like, whoa, phenomenal. Cherry on top of this pie. Because perhaps, as you said, a couple of these offensive linemen, Peter Skoransky, who people are going to question the arm length again. We'll get those official numbers at the NFL Combine, which is next week, the Underwear Olympics, one of my favorite events of the NFL offseason. So I'm very much looking forward to that. But there's Paris Johnson. Uh, I mean, there's Broderick Jones. I mean, there's a lot of big boys that could be there. And some of those guys have versatility, whether sliding inside or being at right tackle. So there's some options here, especially Mekhi Beckner looks great, that all of a sudden maybe Mekhi left, which is – He's been pretty adamant throughout this offseason process. That's where he wants to go and or what happens with the rest. But, man, I, again, there's such a big pivot point here potentially uh, with Mekhi Becker, which, by the way, a quick update, obviously with the picture, uh, he's looking he's looking slim, which I love to see. And Mekhi Becker also, beyond a physical standpoint, I'll just say from exit meetings, and I know you can only take so much with a grain of salt, it just seems like he's got a fire in his eye, a fire in his belly to prove all these people wrong, and I know he's had – glimpses of that in the past but it just feels like a different Mekhi Becton but to your point I think a lot of people will just hear me going right now I'm the parents in uh, Charlie Brown want 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 it's not going to matter to them so they see him week one starting at left tackle and I understand yeah. that as well so uh, I know a lot of people have that perspective there Buffalo yep yeah that's how it's going to be with Mekhi and uh he was such a polarizing player um right remember that last offseason everyone at each other's throats like he Yes. Like, he's on the Jets. We're rooting for him. It's it's not that deep. Of course. You know? A hundred percent. Let me throw one more up here. And, uh, oh, boy, uh, Mekhi Becton got uh, got on the, uh, you know, the old grill and started roasting some people on Twitter. The Jet Press, the latest victim here. So let's dive into this in full flower. I saw so, that right before I popped on. <laughs> which was spectacular. So earlier today, uh, the Tennessee Titans go on an absolute 
splurge Game of Thrones Red Wedding starting slitting people's throats left and right. I mean, there was blood spilled all over the place. Titan fans are just looking all over like, what has happened? What has happened? I, I mean, people are getting dumped left and right. And they've created all this cap space. And really, the cap space just kind of brought them back to the means. They've only got, like, from what I heard from a Titan's person, like 10 million. So all the slaughtering just kind of brought them back to even Steven here as more moves are set to happen. But one of the big moves that happened was Taylor Lewan was cut, the longtime former Michigan guy. He's He's been a really solid player for a long time, but, you know, he's been injury prone. He hasn't had a fully healthy season, Taylor Lewan, since 2017. It's 2023, so it's been a few years since we've seen that, but a lot of people were saying Taylor Lewan, Jets, the two Titans coaches the Jets brought over, the obvious needed offensive tackle. And if you guys can zoom in here, you guys can also see it on my Twitter, but uh, Jet Press tweeted out, in response to Taylor Wan shaking free. Injuries are obviously a concern here, but the Jets might inquire. There's the connection with Keith Carter, and the Jets could use a left tackle. It didn't take long for Mekhi Becton to see this. He quote tweeted it with a couple of crying, laughing emojis, and then the Jet Press tried to do a pivot in the comments saying, hey, man, the revenge tour starts now. Full support. And a lot of people started roasting, unfortunately, the Jet Press for doing the quick uh, flip uh, there in the comments. But nonetheless... I just have to say, and I know it's a sexy thing, anytime a free agent, Jet fans go, hmm, maybe? And I just have to say that, like, the Jets should save their money for other places. I, I, I mean, he's he's injury prone. During that span that I just mentioned where he hasn't started a full season since 2017, he's missed a total of 35 games. And in, like, two of the last four seasons, he's played, like, seven total games in that span. So, like, I don't know. To me, way too many injuries. Plus, he's got the beef. Like, he hated... Uh, Keith Carter, he called him a dictator, and uh, and uh, like a and from a Titan source, they said he like uh, Taylor thought he was just a dick, and that's how he kind of ran his coaching operation, and that rubbed a lot of people the wrong way. So, long story short, I just don't think that's happening. They should save their money for other places, but it's always fun when um, a Kai Beckton dunks on people, though. Yeah, I mean, I will say in the Jets, pre- like whenever you're a fan and you get like a player claps back at you, you're you're done. You know, there's nothing you can do. Um, but at the and I disagree with the Jets press consideration of Terrell Lewan. I mean, he's number one. I just saw that the Busting with the Boys co- podcast is doubling their frequency. That tells me he's probably retiring. Um, and he is a, a 31 year old tackle who's missed the majority of the last three seasons combined. Like we've we've seen that. We don't we don't need that. We don't need George Fant, right? Uh, so I think the Jets need to. Uh, they're probably going to need two tackles because I think Dwayne Brown retires, and I think they need to pay, you know, the money, not um, Orlando Brown twenty million, but pay the twelve million to fourteen million that's going to take to get one solid starter. And then the other one at pick thirteen, uh, I don't see the tail of the one thing. But at the end of the day, most Jets, all Jets fans agree that they're going to sign a tackle. So, what's the big deal, Mackay Beckton? They're going to sign a tackle. You haven't played uh, since Nam, so it's not that personal. <laughs> no, no. But again, uh, to me, different strokes, different folks. Some people are quiet. They don't really use social media in a lot of ways. They just kind of are quietly working behind the scenes. And other people like chips on the shoulder. To me, I, I don't judge on whatever it takes. Hey, man, if for Makai Becton using, again, he wore the T-shirt, obviously, last year, that caught a lot of buzz of fat, lazy, chunky and all. And he turned it into a T-shirt and sold a few. So made some money, I'm sure. On that, So if that's what players need to motivate them, God bless, whatever it takes for you. Ultimately, if you're just on the field dominating the way I think a lot of people expect he possibly can be, uh, we'll see. By the way, the big decision is coming up. We've mentioned this before, but in May is the fifth-year option. That's after the 2023 NFL draft. The Jets must decide whether to accept or decline his option. If they decline it, 2023 will be a contract year, and then Mekhi Becton is set to be an unrestricted free agent the following offseason. If they accept it, he's got 2023 and 2024 under contract. By all accounts, including your boy Zach Rosenblatt, you can talk to him about this tomorrow, I suppose, uh, the full expectation is the Jets will decline that option, making this a contract year. So right. uh, we'll see if Mekhi Becton is motivated by all things that should motivate a guy to try to get another uh, nice payday. So, Absolutely. All right, guys, let's dive into the quarterback stuff. I've I've prolonged far enough. We'll get back into some of the recruiting. There's been some fun stuff on that today as well. But let's get into the quarterback narratives because I saw both of us tweeting about this, Buffalo, in, in some respects, and also I was doing a few podcast hits about it. So it's just been kind of an interesting roller coaster. Like, you know, 
Aaron, a lot of people, I know a lot of people are low because when I joined, I think when I joined your show, that's when it picked up a little steam. Like, Aaron Rodgers, come on, that's unrealistic. Wait a second. Wait a second. That's kind of realistic. Yeah. Well, remember oh, the no, show no. we did where what? it was like every other comment was like, you guys are delusional. There's no chance. Yeah, right. That's a stu- <laughs> Look at the contract, you idiots. Like, of, <laughs> of course. And again, we may still have to circle back to that at some point if and when that happens. But like a, a lot of like idiots, like, God, do you guys open a book before you do podcasts, you dumb morons? And so we had that of kind of the Aaron Rodgers thing. And then most recently, like, oh, boy, man, it really looks like he get moved. And then the latest nuggets are, I've talked to an important source close to the situation. Clearly, Aaron Rodgers is staying. You guys are all dumb for thinking otherwise. I don't know about you, Buffalo, but every bit of information that comes out, we have to filter it in some way. And really, by the way, there's a PSA for life. Anytime you get anything, you should put it through your own filtration system and just think, okay, who is this benefiting? Where is this information coming from? And how should we evaluate it? It seems like for weeks and the Jets own not signing Derek Carr immediately, that they have some inkling they believe Aaron Rodgers will be available. And if he's available, they're going to have a pretty good shot based on all the information they have. That's what it seems like. So for all of a sudden, these sources to come out and say, which I don't know if Aaron Rodgers is out of this cave, but we haven't really heard from him yet. But for all these sources to come out and say, you know, the Jeff Darlingtons and a few others of Tom Pelissero that, you know, no way, he's staying there, man. It seems like the only logical explanation for that, instead of new information suddenly being available, is, whoa, 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 whoa. If if Aaron Rodgers could just kind of pick his place, the trade package will be very low. And if he's getting out of there, we need to rise that, raise that back on up so we have some compelling cases here. That's kind of the BS meter I smell. Did you smell something similar? Buffalo. Yeah, I, you have to... Well, number one, if it says that Aaron Rodgers could possibly be traded, then it's legit. And if it says that he can't go to the Jets, then we know it's fake, clickbait, not real sources. <laughs> that's the filter. Number that's the Homer yes. filter. But in all seriousness, of course, you look at it, and uh, the reports that um, Aaron Rodgers was the, the team was disgusted with him or, or whatever. There now, I think my gut tells me from all the information that they're probably willing to move off of him for the right price, but. The Packers had to go out there and do some damage control because if I'm, you know, again, if I'm trying to sell you a car and my neighbor says, bro, he's disgusted with that car. Like, he hates it. He's done with it. He's had it for 18 years. It's unreliable. Uh, Every summer, the car gets high on ayahuasca and drives into a dark garage for four days, right? Then you're going to, the price of the car goes down. But now I'm going to go out there and say, no, 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 no. I love this car. In fact, I may not even sell this car at all. (laughs) I want to keep it. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, that, that's yeah. what's going on. That's what's going on there. And the I'm not saying that the people reporting on it are, are lying. That's the that's the information that they're getting. They're just reporting on what they're getting. But uh, I think clearly the Jets have called the Packers. Clearly, of course, Aaron Rodgers yes. could be had for a price. Now, what the huge wild card is that I don't know if anyone knows what the heck is Aaron Rodgers going to do. That's the biggest question. Uh, and he said right. we're going to find out near the beginning of March. I think. There's probably, like, hopefully not more than a week left until Aaron Rodgers says something publicly. Right. Yeah, which I – because, again, the days are running out here. We we record these shows intersecting every other week on different channels every mm-hmm. Wednesday. And he said it was at the end of the week, and this is a four-day retreat. So if it was Friday or Saturday – if it was Friday – Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Even if it was Saturday, okay, Saturday, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Like, we should know we're on Wednesday night. I mean, we're approaching Thursday. I mean, we should be on the precipice here of some level of news um, to figure that out, which takes us to the other side, Buffalo. We did a full live stream on this last night, which was a lot of fun. Fans had a lot of fun with it. The Diana Rossini additional report from NFL Live that, oh, 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 Derek Carr, baby. Uh, could be a first ballot Hall of Famer if he wins in New York. And I always love when you have the meetings and then it benefits both sides, both the Derek Carr camp and the Jets camp, to say that the meeting went well. I'm not saying it did or didn't. Uh, Obviously, it seems like it did by all accounts. But I love that it benefits both sides to say it went swimmingly because for Derek Carr's side, that will increase interest from other teams. Like, oh, crap, we can't play around. We need to get into this thing. And then for the Jets' side of sending a a shot across about Aaron Rodgers, hey, you better pick up your crap, pal, or else we're going with Carr here. Again, there's just a lot of benefits to saying and doing this kind of stuff. But I thought that quote was hilarious. And and to be honest, 
you know, looking around, there is a sense that if a quarterback could come here to the Jets and he's put up pretty good numbers and he's durable, so more numbers to come, he's only 31 and he will be 32. If, if a quarterback brings the Jets a Super Bowl and puts up pretty solid numbers, I don't know. I feel like there is a path to the Hall of Fame. Maybe not for its ballot, but I think there's a pretty clear path, a pretty clear roadmap to the Pro Football Hall of Fame, I would say. I don't know I don't know if it's as crazy when you really start to think about it. Well, no. I, if he gets a Super Bowl, it's kind of like saying you're 900 well, grand right, away from yeah. being a millionaire. You know I mean? that That's the big thing. <laughs> but sure, yeah, if he yeah. wins a Super Bowl and he, he keeps produce, putting the counting stats that he's been putting up, for another five or six years, I think Eli Manning again is a is a big name that pops up. Not to irk Giants fans, I'm sorry. There's never been a moment where anyone watched Eli Manning and thought they were watching an elite quarterback. But at the end of the day, when you have two rings and you beat Bill Belichick and Tom Brady twice in the Super Bowl, I think Eli Manning is definitely a Hall of Famer. That's kind of the one that sticks out uh, to me. And there is the Jets fact. There's the Jets factor where it's almost like when LeBron went to Cleveland and won one, it was worth more than it, it felt like than both of the ones Correct. in Miami. Uh, there is that element of it. Now, yeah, let's cross that bridge when we come to it. Let, let's win the Super Bowl, have the parade, and then uh, the, ne- the day after, you and I can discuss Derek Carr's uh, Hall of Fame resume. Deal? Excellent. I, I see that. Uh, and by the way, I saw that you slipped in X Factor in there, some level of Jets X Factor. Speaking of, uh, I, I understand, Buffalo, that you have a brand new show uh, that is a paid subscription service. What more can you tell us about that randomly here in the middle of the show? Yeah, well, I actually was just talking with uh, our buddy Robbie Sabo, so I think we're I think I'm going to be a uh, a contributor of Jets X Factor. I think it's moving in that way. I wow. think there's going to be I think there's going to be an exclusive uh, podcast to myself and Joe Blue with a promo code that is on the Jets X Factor website. Had a little productive business meeting with one Robbie Sabo, so I think I'm going to be joining the Jets X Factor uh, X Factor uh, contingency. They do great work uh, over there, so excited for that one. Also, we do have guests. Connor Rogers coming on after the combine. Excited for that one. Boom. Absolutely. I will be honest. <laughs> you gave me a little bit of a tease because uh, it was over the weekend. Maybe not. It may have been this past weekend. Hmm. I was just, you know, when I hop on YouTube, I'm subscribed to, to the Buffalo Jet fan. By the way, who the hell wouldn't be? But all of a sudden, I saw a video that had Connor Rogers in the headline. I'm like, oh, wow. Okay. Buffalo Midas Toucher got Connor Rogers like that. And then I hopped over and you were saying something about Connor Rogers. I went, ah, teased. So I'm looking forward to that uh, eventually coming down the pike. That should be a lot of fun, especially after the mm-hmm. combine. I know he's a busy guy, but that's, that sounds like a lot of fun. Hey, yeah, man. Looking forward to it. All right. Excellent. I uh, just had to work that in there. You, you worked in Jets X Factor, that kind of terminology into your lingo. How the how could I possibly, how could you tease me with that <laughs> strawberry uh, that I couldn't, uh, of course, uh, sink my teeth into that, which, by the way, should be spectacular. Uh, I am looking forward to all that. Uh, and by the way, looking forward to the combine, which, by the way, everybody is coming up next week. Feel free, no matter where you're watching, everybody, show your support both for the Buffalo Jet fan, which, again, his YouTube channel description is down below in the uh, bio of this YouTube video. Also, uh, get your questions in. Start piling them in. We'll be working uh, to those here in just a couple of minutes after I get through uh, one more topic item here with, uh, again, the Buffalo Jet fan. And that is the player recruiting element. And, And Buffalo... You don't have to agree with every guy, and I said that earlier when I did the video on uh, John Franklin Meyer. So earlier today, among the the mass exodus of Tennessee Titans land, was uh, John Franklin Myers trying to recruit Robert Woods to the New York Jets. Now, the interesting factoid about, first off, that may seem random to you. They were teammates back in 2018 on the Los Angeles Rams, but this is the second time he's tried to recruit him. And I wrote a piece about it. I thought it was kind of funny because a year ago in March, when he was floated around in trade rumors, he was pounding the table saying, Jets, we got to go get this guy openly on social media. Once again, now he's got, he's like Robert Woods and he's trying to do it again. So regardless of how you feel about Robert Woods specifically, how do you feel in general that we are getting a glutton of players that are both current, John Franklin Myers, Sauce Gardner, DJ Reed, and others that are openly campaigning for guys to either be traded or signed here, which feels palpable. That's kind of cool. And even former players, LaDainian Tomlinson came out and absolutely pounded the table on NFL Network and NFL Total Access for Derek Carr to come here. I shared one of the graphics earlier, I shared the video a couple nights ago, 
and it's cool to, for me anyway that all these former players, current players, and everybody are trying to do whatever they can to bring talent to this team. In a general sense, Buffalo, how do you feel about all these current and former players doing it? It, it feels more present than really ever before that I can remember, quite frankly. It, it screams that there's something happening here that that we believe in, and I and I don't think we've had that. We had it briefly in 2015, and if we've had it significantly uh, in the beginning of the Rex Ryan years. And that's and of course, you know, we only won seven games last year. I understand that, but they're definitely the the stench of what it means to be the New York Jets is starting to dissipate a little bit, a little bit. I think with JD and Robert Sala. We at least have men who are respected around the league in their profession. I don't know if both of them are like the, our franchise saviors or, or if they're going to be here for, for 10 years. I hope they both are because continuity and longevity usually uh, has some success that goes along with it. But come on, if we can't tell the difference between Joe Douglas and, and Robert Sala compared to Adam Gase, <laughs> Mike McCagnan, Todd Bowles, John Edzik, I mean, we're definitely in the best shape we've been in a decade. You could feel it. It... it they are not embarrassed to be Jets. Part of that is the young guys. Like, I go, we don't, we don't care. All the scars that we wear, Sauce Gardner, you know, Garrett Wilson, that means nothing to them. They know that True. they were on a team that had a really good defense that started the season strong, and they collapsed, and now they got to come back stronger. I like to see it. Uh, specifically on Robert Woods, you know, I think obviously at this stage in his career with injuries, probably not. Although I will say, you know, for a stress there, Robert Woods is a, a damn good receiver, very underrated only receiver, here's a little nugget. I know you like your little stat nuggets, yeah. uh, Boy Green. Yeah. Robert Woods is the sure. only receiver in NFL history to post back to back seasons of over 1,100 yards and not have a Pro Bowl in his career. So. Wow. Yeah. That's, wow. I did not know that stat. That's bonkers. <laughs> I will say that I think on the whole, Bobby Trees, for those who do not know his nickname, uh, he is a guy that does not get enough respect. Now, I'm not saying, and I, I don't want to sell, you know, the, the stock a little too high here. I'm not saying he's an alpha DeAndre Hopkins insert really top number or Justin Jefferson kind of guy. But those two seasons in which you speak of, which were the, the prime years of the Sean McVay Rams thing, where he had 1,100 and 1,200 yards respectively, and those back-to-back -back seasons with 80-plus catches in both those years, like Robert Woods is just a solid guy. Again, he's not massive. He's about six foot flat, 195 pounds and change, but he's a technician as a route runner. He's, he's a great blocker, which I'm sure would attract the Jets uh, as this running team. And he's just a professional, which I think could only help potentially the other wide receivers in the room. And I don't think he's going to be very costly, quite frankly. He's Jericho he's off a bad year that he got traded for. So. Yeah. Yeah, it reminds what was me your a lot of, form? He, Jericho Cotchery. Interesting. Yeah. I I would like to see a little bit more, not to call out Robert Woods like he hasn't done it. The thing that I loved about Jericho were – those contested catches. He had a lot of those crazy ones, the, the Cleveland game. I, I am always reminded of with the groin injury. And then he's just kind of like limping and then like one handed, you know, so a little bit more of that, but in general, I think you're right. So if he comes to the right price, especially with all the uncertainty around guys like Braxton Berrios, Corey Davis, I mean, Robert Woods is kind of intriguing. Again, I know every jet fan in the world wants some big ass receiver to replace Corey Davis, whether that's Alan Lazard or somebody, to add some variety to the diet. But I will say this, just to push back on that a little bit, if you could have five Garrett Wilsons, would any of us say, I don't know, they're kind of short? No. So just get me really good receivers, and then we're going to kind of figure it out. Sure, in a perfect world, if it was a lab table and I'm trying to build the perfect receiving core, all right, here's a five foot eight guy, here's a six foot guy, here's a six foot five guy, sure. But I don't think everything always works within that sphere. So Robert Woods is kind of yeah. interesting. Kind of yeah. interesting. Tyreek Hill and Jalen Waddle are both pretty small. That seems to be working right. out for them. <laughs> yeah. A hundred percent. Which, by the way, Buffalo, if I'm going to throw you out on the fire here, is there a player that either has been and maybe not talked enough about or hasn't been that you want to try to start recruiting, whether it's trade, free agency, or anything of that nature? Is there a player that you want to try to recruit and maybe other people will kind of carry the torch? OBJ was another one, by the way, to throw a couple of them out there. Sauce Gardner had OBJ in his Twitch stream. We did a video on that a couple of days ago and OBJ responded to the tweet. Now I need some level. I don't know if we have that in our audience, but I actually, I'm going to bring this up. Okay. Let's try to see if we can figure this out together, Buffalo, because uh, okay. OBJ is a very unique individual. He is a very talented guy. I still think OBJ has a lot of gas left in the tank, 
but I need you to help me interpret what he said to me. So when I get a notification on my phone that OBJ tweeted at me, I'm like, oh, wow, phenomenal, cool. OBJ, nice, man. That's uh, that's groovy. And then I was trying to understand what the hell he said to me. So maybe we can all figure <laughs> that out right now live on the show. So I wasn't planning on doing this, but you know what? Let's let's try to do this when, again, uh, okay, so here it is. Okay, I just found it. So we're, I'm going to throw this up on the screen, okay? And I'll, I'll give you the full context here in a second of uh, OBJ. And you guys try to interpret this for me. So before his tweet, I'm going to scroll up real quick. So, again, I tweet out this, okay? Here's the tweet. Oh, baby, Jets corner Ahmad Gardner, Sauce Gardner, was hanging out playing some video games with free agent wide receiver OBJ this week. Some recruiting, perhaps. I just got to tweet this out, tag everyone involved. Okay. Late at night, all of a sudden, ba-ding, OBJ tweeted back at you. I'm like, OBJ. So here we go. Odell Beckham Jr. tweets back and says, my favorite player, referencing Sauce. Say, bro, hmm, crying emoji, crying emoji, crying emoji. Don't forget the cheese, Mr. One Shy of 20. What the hell does that mean? Can anyone interpret this? I was trying to, I was almost going to call because I got a few interns at my radio station and they're still in college. I was going to say, what does this mean? Buffalo, what's your gut? What is OBJ saying to me? What is he saying here? Don't forget to count the cheese, Mr. One Shot. So it was one, I don't know, 20 cheese money, 20,000 lactose intolerance. I don't know. Mm -hmm. I don't know. <laughs> there's something here yeah because like my favorite player okay that's pretty blunt i get right. what he's trying to say there's sauce his favorite player say bro hmm like maybe he's thinking about it don't forget the cheese so it's going to cost some money i would assume mr one shy of 20 i i, I don't 20. understand that that's last 20. piece of the puzzle fan so i just again if you guys can help me uh, apparently a lot of people do not want the drama of obj i th i think he's incredibly talented now Obviously, as I take this off the screen, you guys uh, keep me posted. I'll keep it on the side just in case we get an answer to that question. But I I'll say overall here on the OBJ thing, I think people forget because basically he was out. He wasn't basically. He was out all of last season. Terrence ACL in, the, in that past Super Bowl. They ended up winning a ring, so good for OBJ. But, you know, when they're kind of going through the whole process here, I think people forget that OBJ is this incredibly talented freak. And, man, if you could add your quarterback, Derek Carr, Aaron Rodgers, you got Elijah Moore, Garrett Wilson, OBJ. I don't know, man. That sounds pretty sexy to me. So uh, I'd be kind of intrigued. So back to the original question, although guys continue to th – th there are some funny responses here already for what you believe. Uh, okay, I'm seeing some sauce stuff. Okay, I, I will k keep the answers coming in, and maybe we'll be able to interpret this. This is hilarious. I did not know this was going to be on the show. But uh, back to you here, Buffalo. Is there a player that you'd like to recruit, and maybe with your recruitment, other people start getting involved in helping you, current Jet players, old Jet players? They're trying to do whatever they can to woo. That was the term that Lakin Tomlinson used, the woo list. He's trying to woo people, Ric Flair style, to the Jets. What, who are you trying to woo, Buffalo? Who do you want to woo? Well, there's someone. Uh, there, there's a free agent that my number one free agent crush, and I think he's probably going to get franchise tag, and he's probably not leaving okay. Philly, even though he got his car okay. stolen there. But I love me some C.J. Gardner Johnson, safety of the Philadelphia mm. Eagles. This dude is a Swiss Army knife. He can play the slot corner. He can play the deep middle. Uh, he's a physical tackler. I mean, he was flying off my screen in the Super Bowl. And he'll tie for the lead league in interceptions, over 70 tackles, two and a half sacks. Remember Marcus Gilchrist? Of course. How could you forget Marcus Gilchrist? Who is Imagine that? Who Marcus is nice Gilchrist player. on yeah. just steroids, right? Because he was kind of like a mm. slot corner, free safety kind of guy. Jamar uh, Marcus Gilchrist is absolutely on steroids. That's uh, C.J. Gardner-Johnson. He would Im immediately, if you stuck in Mexico, Jordan Whitehead, the Jets would have the best secondary in football. Now... It's a dreamy scenario, number one. I don't, he probably gets tagged. Number two, do the Jets have it in the cards to get a quarterback, fix an offensive line, and make C.J. Gardner-Johnson one of the top three highest-paid safeties in the NFL? Probably not, but that would be, if if I had a free agent big board um, for the Jets, he would have to be number one. I love him. Yeah, he is a big – I know Joe Caparoso it has him as his number one guy as part of their Badlands uh, War Room uh, tier. I've not joined that tier I've been on the edge. How could I not? I should probably do it, I guess. But it's all um, full. All the th spots are filled up. Yeah, I know. I'm gonna have to either like put in a word, kind of you know, elbow, elbow, wink, wink, slide my blank envelope across the table. That's imp I just have to say on a random note. I, I know not everyone is on the Badlands thing that they've created such a demand with their paid podcast. The only way you can listen or really contribute in any way to anything they're doing is paid. 
and that they've created a waiting list of people to hand them piles of money. Only if I could one day get to they, again, they do an amazing job. And I, I've made that very clear uh, with what they've been able to do. But I just got to say, yeah, it's just kind of a salute. They're a like, machine, wow. man. It's incredible. 100 percent. And so and, and I know you guys are jumping into Patreon now. I feel like I have to, too. But I have to, like, beat you guys. Like, I have to go one ahead. Only fans is next. That's a, that I've been telling you guys a big show, a big reveal's coming later this week. Only fans. It's coming. Everything you didn't want to see. I actually I may have a feature where you pay me money to just not show anything. Please, for the love of everything, here is money. Don't. Every super chat you get, you put more clothes on. <laughs> <laughs> a winter coat, you know, just more. Yeah, thanks. Thanks, Boy Green. Yeah, that that may be a feature. So uh, T B D details on that. Didn't mean to reveal that tonight, but hey, you know what? Sometimes uh, uh, things happen here on the show. Hey, this is uh, the late night show, you know? Yeah, that's right. It's uh, Boy Green and Buffalo After Dark. And again, uh, why we're not uh, paying a subscription service, or you people are right now, is uh, beyond any of us. But let's get to this YouTube Super Chat coming in, which, by the way, we always appreciate. Thank you so much, uh, brother. And this uh, name change, I know he has a different name than this, but DFF1234. Uh, throwing two dollars in our tin cup thank you so much baby that uh, revs the engine that's for sure one to a hundred chance we get rogers of course he's referencing green bay packers quarterback aaron rogers i'm gonna say this and, and this is my gut and uh i won't say this is sourced but i i will use the term informed opinion i feel like i've talked to a lot of people on all different sides of this over the last bunch of weeks and months I feel like the chances that Jets get Aaron Rodgers is an 85. And that's going to sound incredibly high. Maybe. I, I will see what Buffalo says. I just feel so certain that there's no way in heck, with everything how it's transpired, that the Jets don't have some inside knowledge. Now, I didn't say 100, but they right. have some hook that, like, we think we're getting this guy. Or else, I believe, Carr would have been signed in that building. They would have just, let's lock up quarterback right now. I could understand the Jets being in that position. So I'm going 85, baby, that the Jets will have Aaron Rodgers, and that information will come out sooner rather than later. What say you, Buffalo? Man, uh, not as confident. So I'll say I think that there is a 60- Five, a two-thirds chance that he's playing elsewhere. I think there's a 65% chance he's moved. I, th- I don't think he's playing in Green okay. Bay. If he is moved, I think there's an 80% chance that it's to the Jets. So, you know, you have to do whatever formula that we learned in in whatever 10th grade I see. Uh, to, f- yeah. to find the exact percentage. But so between 60, uh, uh, you know, the lower, eh, a little bit better than a 50-50 shot. I- I'd say that. A little bit better than a 50-50 okay. shot, which is a lot higher than I thought it was a month ago. Um, so I think that Aaron Rodgers is the most likely name to be the Jets quarter. I know I'm in the minority on that. I know we, we both are. I think Derek Carr, yes. the fact that it seems crazy on its face to say that a guy who's literally in a darkness, in a dark room, is more of a chance than a guy who was visited at our facility and we told him you in can the be light. a Hall of Famer. <laughs> and, yeah. And had a sandwich and was in the bathroom for six minutes and all the other people on Jets Twitter who were spying and gave us all this information. Uh, I just, I think it's, I felt this way for a few weeks. I think it's Aaron Rodgers, man. I think they're deadlocked on him. I think they've talked to Green Bay, and I think they're just waiting on word from Aaron. I I think you're right, too. And by the way, I will just say additionally uh, on all this stuff, and I'm seeing people are all over all over here uh, with their percentages uh, on Aaron Rodgers. There's some on Derek Carr. I'm seeing some on others. I, I don't know. I, I just have a gut feeling. I mean, ultimately, we'll see what happens sooner rather than later here. But DFF one two three four. Uh, thank you so much uh, for the super chat. Uh, we will see. But I, I I don't know, man. Color me intrigued. I, I think uh, all these interpretations, by the way, the OBJ thing are hilarious. So you guys uh, keep those coming in as well. That is uh, that is uh, that is funny. All right, uh, let's see. Uh, again, I don't even really want to throw this up on the big screen. Uh, people, I've seen a few of these. If Derek Carr so good, why was he cut? Again, the Raiders just did a horrible job of managing everything. The the contract extension to put that guarantee on February 15th, They, I don't know what they were thinking by putting this in and really all of those. So I don't think that is a referendum on Derek Carr sucking or not sucking. I just think that's a referendum on the Raiders bungling things as they normally do. Anything different than that, uh, Buffalo? Well, no, and uh, we've seen parting of ways and relationships run their course with great quarter with great quarterbacks. The Air, we were talking about Aaron Rodgers might be leaving. Well, does he suck? Yeah. No. 
Tom Brady and Bill Belichick ran its course. Brady goes and wins a ring. Andy Reid is in Philadelphia forever in five conference championships. The parting of ways, they both make it back to the... Now, has Derek Carr accomplished even close to what those men have? No, but the, the point stands is just because uh, he's a team is choosing to part ways of the player, that in and of itself is not evidence that that player is not good. So now, if you want to talk about Derek Carr and what you see watching his games and all of that, and if you don't think he's worth uh, committing to uh, for the long term for $40 million, I'm listening to that. I, you know, I, there's a part of me that will be like, ooh, when we see the sticker of how much it costs to sign, sign Derek Carr, part of me will. But I think just, I think that's a little bit of a, it's a little bit dis, dishonest of an argument because we know there's examples of guys who are uh, part ways with their team and it's not because they're trash. We know that. By the way, real quick, this is not a question I was asked, but I'll ask it to you. Derek Carr's on the Jets team, and let's and obviously consider the factor that you're not trading for Derek Carr, that you'll have all your picks and your money and what have you. What is the ceiling of the Jets team outside of any dramatically serious addition, outside of basic things that can happen this offseason? I'm not saying they get DeAndre Hopkins or something. Like Derek Carr, and they have their picks and money, and they just kind of fill holes. What is the ceiling of that Jets team manned by Derek Carr right now, in your opinion, Buffalo? So when I when I think about this, I, I try to think of another team that's kind of built similarly, and, and it's difficult to do. I'm like, okay, like an above average quarterback with this. So I, I, the way I see it, Paul, I'm like, okay, imagine if the Minnesota Vikings had a top five defense. That's the that's the way I look at it. Oh, the guy, okay. Kirk, Kirk Cousins, Derek Carr, Garrett Wilson, maybe not quite Justin Jefferson, Dalvin Cook, Brees Hall. Maybe not a perfect comparison, but you, you, you kind of see where I'm going. I can with get it. the gist. Sure. Now, I'd probably tell you you can make a conference championship. Uh, that's what I would. That's what I would say. Now, uh, again, I know I, I don't. I don't have a crystal ball. It could happen because people will cite um, Nick. What Foles do you think? Like and, regular season wins. What what, okay. what would be a realistic number? Um, I think I'd expect to a win ten. Win team? I'd expect to a win 11? ten. Eleven. I'd expect to win okay. ten games. I'd expect to win ten games. With now, if you look at the the net, if I'm looking at a, a two year window, because it's crazy to look beyond that. But for the next two years, I expect our defense to be a top ten defense. Um, so assuming normal injuries and all that, I would expect the Jets to be a 10 or 11 win uh, team with Derek Carr. And, and nipping at the heels uh, of the Buffalo Bills, now we're not, J- Derek Carr is not as good as Josh Allen. They would still, the Bills would still be the favorites in the division, for sure, rightfully so. But we show we played the Bills twice this year um, to a, uh, in both games combined, I think they outscored us by five points. Uh, and we split the, the series one and one, and that was with, yeah. Mike White and, and Zach Wilson. So, uh, yeah, we could we could make the Bills a little bit uncomfortable with Derek Carr. Um, but again, the, of the last twenty Super Bowls, um, like seventeen of them have, have been won by Hall of Famers. You know, it just is what it is. It's yeah, it's it, it's it's tough. But I like Derek Carr. He gives you a shot to make some noise. He does. Same question, Aaron Rodgers. What say you? Uh, Aaron Rodgers. Yeah, so regular think, season, again, is there a bigger jump? Uh, oh, they're a 12-win yeah. team. They're, uh, yeah, they're I think the he, AFC East. Like, what, what is the evaluation there? I, in the I think Aaron Rodgers makes us right there neck and neck with the Bills for the division. I do. I okay. think you're fighting the Bills right. for the division down to the, the final stretch. And no one's going to be above the Chiefs until Patrick Mahomes and, <laughs> and Andy Reid are no longer on the same uh, t- sideline together on paper. But could you win a Super Bowl? With Aaron Rodgers on this team, yeah, I know the offensive line, I, we understand. But if you have a top eight defense and you have an elite quarterback, you're you're a Super Bowl contender. Given the big and the biggest caveat to this, Paul, is our coaching staff. Do we have a good coaching staff? Like that's the biggest question to me. So if you're saying all things being equal, yes, the biggest question is our coaching staff because I'm looking at it on paper, and I don't. If you ask me, where does our coaching staff rank in the AFC East? I don't know if I can give you an argument that would put them higher than fourth or third at the highest. So that that's a big caveat. But yes, Aaron Rodgers. If it turns out that we have a competent coaching staff, the ceiling is definitely a Super Bowl. And and with Derek Carr, I just I think it's a tad beneath that. And, and I've liked Derek Carr for a long time. And I and I think if you asked any Jets fan a year ago, you know, could Derek Carr win a Super Bowl? They all would have said no. But now that he had one sandwich with our coaching, like we're already we're homers for him now. You know, it's like now all of a sudden he's the the, the best thing ever. Um, so uh, you, you 
there's a difference between what Aaron Rodgers could do for you and what Derek Carr can do for you. I'm sorry. That's just, that's just undeniable. hundred <laughs> percent. Yeah. It, but I was just thinking about that question you just said about the AFC's coaching re- staff ranks and like Bill Belichick almost like gets this default notion within himself. Like Bill O'Brien's obviously an upgrade, but I think like anyone would have been an upgrade over that weird Matt Patricia yeah. Joe Judge thing. So you kind of like think of that. And the Buffalo have uh, Buffalo Bills have continuity. So Sean McDermott at the top. They have Dorsey, who's coming back for a second year. Mm-hmm. Leslie Frazier is the longest tenure defense coordinator in the NFL. There's a there's oh you like stats? There you go. There's a stat. Uh, which is interesting. And then the Dolphins just brought in Vic Fangio, who's got who's widely respected, and he knows he used to – Robert Sowers is QC at one point. So there's kind of a weird connection there too. So, yeah, it, it is a compelling case. All right, let's sprinkle in some uh, random questions here from the fans because, again, this is the show by the people for the people. Let's throw in a couple of these. We have uh, Jerry jumping in here. We'll throw this to you first, Buffalo. Is Brees Hall 100% next year? Might be by the end of the year. Thoughts? Uh, by the, Yeah, I think – if you look maybe after Thanksgiving, maybe he's close to resembling his former self or if you make a playoff run. But I anticipate that he'll start the year probably on like the pup list. Um, but that would be great if he could be if he could be by himself by the end of next year and be fresh for a playoff run. I think that's the best case scenario. Um, but you probably don't see like a full uh, season out of Brees Hall until 2024. Um, unless he goes Adrian full Adrian Peterson mode. You never know. Again, that was going to be, uh, I have three words, Adrian, Peterson, and VP, baby. Boom. <laughs> Let's just boom. Right after the 20 ACL, 2,000 yards. He could have had the rushing record if he wanted to. I don't know, man. Get, I, I'm believing, man. I, I'm believing all the Brees Hall hype videos. They're like, I, I'm going to be honest, the Jets' Twitter account scared the crap out of me earlier today. I'm going to be honest. I don't know if anyone else did. Um, the Jets are the only account for my personal Twitter, at Green 25 wink. Uh, that I have notifications set for another account, and the Jets have it. They tweeted this out earlier today. Okay, this is uh, this is the tweet uh, that they sent out, uh, and I think they actually, yeah, I think they actually deleted it after the fact. Oh yeah, it, they did. They did delete it. So okay, so they tweeted out for Brees Hall minor setback, and I'm like. <gasps> Minor setback. They have the caption, minor setback, Brees Hall picture, and like a quote that was super small. It was hard to read. And I'm like, no, please, God, no. And then the Jets re apparently retweeted out. I thought they created it as part of a thread. And then they changed it to major comeback on the way. And I already see in the comment section, you better wording. They said, our bad. He's all good, guys. Our apologies. So the Jets official Twitter account scared the crap out of me. With Ooh. Brees Hall saying minor setback, and I'm like, oh no, the surgery, the rehab, what could have possibly went wrong? So they did scare me. But I'm believing, outside of that unfortunate Twitter incident earlier today, I love everything I'm seeing from Brees Hall's own Instagram and others with his workouts. He seems to be ahead of schedule, and I'm buying into all that. I know Buffalo apparently has a pretty good filter. He's like, Mackay Becton, I don't care if you're drinking Slim Fast, show up week one. <laughs> but me, like, I, I get intrigued, I get tantalized. My, 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 yeah. my juice. Pieces are flowing when I see these videos. I'm like, I'm all hype. I'm glass half full. So uh, I think, I think we've forgotten how. Dude, I think we've already forgotten how special this kid was, man. Like, yes, I, I agree. God, he. Yeah. Oh man, it, it, getting uh, now here. We'll talk about some stats. So yeah. Maurice Hall, when he went down with an injury, was averaging 5.8 yards per carry. Mind you, this was with an inept passing attack with a yes. shaky offensive Not line, existing. all that. Now, at the at the end of the season, the running back with the most, uh, who had the enough whatever carries to qualify, who led the league in yards per attempt, was five point three. So Brees Hall was a half a, y- a yard. A he- that is <laughs> just massive, massive, massive. Right. I mean, f- five yards per carry is like elite. Four yards is like you're, you're good enough. Four point five yeah. is like maybe you're a pro. Near six. Um, and then I think there was. Um, an element of Brees in the passing game that was starting to be unlocked. A little Le'Veon yes. Bell, they were a little out of the, the slot. The Dolphins game shot, come on. That throw yeah, by he, Zach Wilson, and he like has the, the perfect route. speed, just kind of the perfect cut, cut, cut. He should have had a touchdown on that play, but yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. 100 yards rushing and 100 yards receiving in that game. I mean, this come dude on. was uh, – there was a few games where, man, he was an offense unto himself. Uh, uh, just like – yeah, and I know injuries – it's like injuries happen to everyone, and it's like, dude, no. Uh, in, in two, teams don't lose <laughs> their two best offensive players who are both like 24 years in the same quarter. 
No, that doesn't happen to everyone. Give me a break. No. When did that happen to the no. Chiefs or the Eagles or the, the Bengals? Or the, yeah, when did Patrick happen? Mahomes and Tyreek Hill in their prime go down? Like, <laughs> right. come on. like uh, yeah. that's true. I am looking forward to it, though, to your point. Derek Carr or Aaron Rodgers, because I believe I will put that question out there. I believe the Jets are having one of those two guys at quarterback. I would almost be Agreed. willing to lock that in and guarantee it. It's one of those two guys. I believe. And how awesome is that, man? How awesome! Like we're we're fighting about it, dude. If if the Jets are faced with Aaron Rodgers and Derek Carr, both want to be your freaking quarterback. They've already won. That that like 100%. The, the most off seasons. The you the best. Remember when Kirk Cousins was available? It was like a huge deal. Most off seasons, the best quarterback available is like a Jacoby Brissett. I mean, yes. the fact that we ha- now it sucks we missed out on Zach, but the timing of we hit an off season of where it's really damn good quarterback mobility, and I think that you know the the Aaron Rodgers out there has dimmed the light on Derek Carr. Where if you know Aaron Rodgers was totally going to play in Green Bay and Derek Carr was the only option, we would be salivating and chomping at the bit and be all over Derek Carr. So uh, it could be a lot worse, man. If one of those two guys is our quarterback, I'm going to be stoked. And I'm glad that you brought that up, Buffalo, because I was thinking about that on the way home. That there, I remember, I remember vividly years where, all right, quarterback time, and you look at free agents, and to your point, it's Brian Hoyer, Jacoby Brissett, or draft. <laughs> and the fact of the matter that the Jets have, I don't know, Aaron Rodgers, Derek Carr, we're like throwing rocks at each other. <laughs> yeah. Like I'm just like, damn, man, we get Derek. Let's just say we get Derek Carr, who uh, we both obviously agree is a lower level than Aaron Rodgers. What is Brees Hall going to do with Derek Carr, who we're not going to have to think about? Is he going to complete this pass? How how many points are we scoring today? I mean, those are the advanced questions that right. a lot of other franchise in the NFL fans just take for granted. Of course, we're scoring points today. We're like, are we getting a first down today? I mean, we've unfortunately had those conversations over the last <laughs> decade. So, I mean, I am I am giddy. What does I that yellow line up? mean? What happens if you get to the yellow line, boy green? Do you win? <laughs> do we break it? <laughs> yeah, yeah, touchdown. Uh, no, no, no touchdown. Uh, 90 more yards. Oh, I see. I, I'm so sorry. <laughs> uh, you know, it, it's, a, it's an excellent point. Uh, we'll go rapid fire here through a bunch of these, try to get to as much of them as possible. We normally go about an hour here on the live stream. Uh, Chris K. the fifth loyal support of the show. What direction do you guys think we are headed in regard to our safeties? Do we settle for ser- serviceable? Do we try to lock in the most elite secondary in the NFL? Nice to get you guys live. Thank you for that, Chris. And again, uh, every Wednesday at about 9 o'clock. Again, there will be some exceptions like next week. Uh, we'll kind of see what happens. I-, I have an exciting opportunity I can't really talk about yet, but that will be that will be known in the month of March, so why I may be absent. But uh, more on that later. Again, I have all these teases. I can't help myself. But to your question, uh, first off, Zach Rosenblatt came out and said it's unlikely. And I, we mentioned this to Buffalo a few weeks ago. But I, I feel like every time it's devastating news again because, you know, Buffalo might have short-term memory loss. Or we may forget. But LaMarcus Dorner is, again, unlikely to return, according to Zach Rosenblatt. Damn. So, again, another attacker like, oh, no, I, I forgot that had happened. So he's <laughs> unlikely to come back. And Zach Rosenblatt also listed Jordan Whitehead as a potential cap casualty. So again, the Jets are going to, once they pick the quarterback to take a quick detour to come back, whether it's Derek Carr or Aaron Rodgers, the cap hit is going to be extremely small for this year and money will be pushed back. But nonetheless, they will have to make business decisions. Is Corey Davis cut? Is Carl Lawson cut? Is Jordan Whitehead cut? Connor McGovern has come back. Do they go cheap there? Like they're going to, the Jets are going to have to make these decisions at, at money because again, they haven't had to pay a quarterback in. I tried to look this up, by the way, the highest cap number they've had to pay a quarterback in a long time. And man, it's been forever since they've had to deal with the first world problem of the rest of the NFL of actually having to pay a quarterback money because it's always been rookies or cheap ass veterans. So they have to learn how to be an NFL organization. So that will kind of feed into this question a little bit. But to me, my gut is it's a mix of both, which may seem like a cop-out. I think they will try to do their CJ dive, Jesse Bates dive, Von Bell maybe on a lower scale dive, and then pair that with whether it ends up being Whitehead or maybe a safety on day two or early day three. Like I, I think they kind of go in the middle. I love your point, though. Imagine Sauce, DJ Reed, and like superstar safeties back there and building your defense from the back out. But – I think ultimately they kind of go somewhere in between and do a little bit of both. Buffalo? Yeah, I think I could paint you a picture of a – that's why it's so it's difficult to – and what's up, Chris, by the way? He's, he's awesome, dude. Um, it's difficult to yeah. take it one position at a time be, because the, there is a version of the offseason where if they do cut Carl Lawson, maybe end Corey Davis and then go cheap, like mm-hmm. 
take a, a wide receiver in the third round to replace Corey Davis and then use that money at safety. But then maybe if they keep Corey or sign Alan Lazard, then they go cheaper at safety. But my gut tells me a, a good middle option is Jimmy Ward, uh, who is a free agent from the San Francisco 49ers. Um, and obviously Robert Sala has uh, made a habit of signing uh, former players of his. He's a little, little longer in the tooth. He's 31, so it's a short-term deal. He's played both uh, nickel, slaughter, nickel uh, corner and f- free safety. And it's basically like this. Imagine Paul Boy Green if LaMarcus Joyner was good at football. That would be Jimmy Ward. So kind of the whole thing they were trying to accomplish <laughs> with the Joyner thing, with the veteran, with the versatility. Um, yeah. Jimmy Ward would accomplish that. And, you know, all jokes aside, Joyner did have a better season than I thought he would. I remember, didn't he have like Three two picks, two, two uh, picks in, in one Pro game? So, yeah. And he stayed healthy for the most part, so, you know. But obviously that's the number one starting position that I think would need an upgrade. So I think if you... Uh, maybe if you sign Jimmy Ward and then, you know, you take a, a safety in, in the mid-rounds. Another guy, I'm really high on Tony Adams. Uh, I think that undra- yes. undrafted free agent, I um, want a freak be. athlete. Yeah. And there's a little snippets of there on film. It's not much, but, man, it looks really good. So you, you obviously you can't bank on that. But he's a guy where if you sign Jimmy Ward for a year and you have Adams backing him up, um, I think Ashton Davis is probably just a backup and a special teamer at this point in his career. But, uh, yeah, Jimmy Ward's a name, uh, a name to keep an eye on. By the way, speaking of safeties, I remember when we solved it in the same draft, Jamal Adams, Marcus May, back-to-back, the first mm-hmm. time in Jets franchise history that they went position-to-position like that safety-safety is their first two picks. I remember when we solved that position a couple of years ago. That was fun. Those were yeah. Good yeah, well, that, there was a, a couple of years where, like, that was the only part of the team that was, like, <laughs> keeping us in games or, like, or, or worth a damn. Oh, uh, man, it's tough. We, you know, maybe maybe should have taken – Patrick Mahomes, but uh, it's all right. Hey, yeah. the, Christian the, the Hackenberg, part... man. Remember, remember. <laughs> it's, uh, that's right. That's right. That that will forever kill me, by the way. I'm looking forward to that. Uh, ben Ross, uh, Boy Green and Buffalo are the most fun Jets content creators. Yeah, we don't claim to be the smartest or the most insightful or or really anything, quite frankly. But if you throw fun in there, I think uh, that, uh, that, that that's somewhat serviceable. Somewhat serviceable, yeah. I will say. Agreed. Somewhat Agreed. Serviceable. We have a good time. Yeah. Yeah, that's, uh, that's for sure. Uh, I guess uh, we'll just kind of wrap up with this again. Any final questions? I'm trying to filter back through because, again, I kind of got lost in the comments section. That, uh, that happens every once in a while. So if you guys have any final ones, I will uh, sprinkle those in before we release uh, Buffalo uh, to the Hounds. By the way, Buffalo, while I'm trying to see if there's any final questions, I want to circle back uh, to your X Factor thing because that's – Big news that on top of your podcast that you may become a contributor. So uh, that mu- first off, that must be just a great sign. So you're like, okay, I'm going to do a podcast, and immediately once the podcast's off the ground, actually, I've just been promoted to uh, to the assistant <laughs> to the regional manager. For that to happen immediately, that's just that's just got to be a great sign. It, yeah, it, it was it was pretty cool. And uh, if you guys will indulge me, it was like a, a yeah, it was a pretty wild moment because this week was the one year anniversary of my YouTube thing. And uh, I definitely started one year. It. Yeah, so That's, I wow. I never thought it would be like I thought it would just be I'd have my own little corner, like maybe one day get to a thousand subscribers, just talk to Jets fans. So I never thought it would be a thing where I'm like, man, like someone's willing to like pay me money. I even it's not a lot of money, by the way. Like it's gas money, but still, like the, right. the fact that someone's willing to do that, to, like just to talk about my favorite team, is freaking yeah. awesome. And obviously, it wouldn't be possible with a lot of the people that are hanging out um in the chat so a lot lots of looking forward to this upcoming year i'm going to try to like not live and die with every game as much because i i know that there's like a low threshold for that but i just maybe i shouldn't make videos like 24 hours after a loss or something but uh, <laughs> i appreciate you guys ride with me through like the whole fire jeff Fulbricks and all that i'm trying to I'm trying to be yeah. more steady I'm trying yeah yeah <laughs> But uh, again, you you can't. But you can't wait that long. The Green Stampede, for Pete's sake! What the hell would they do? Just run around in circles <laughs> as they wait for your arrival? I mean, for Pete's sake! I just uh, I don't even know uh, what would you do. Okay, here's a cool question. Okay, this is behind the scenes. I've seen a few people ask this kind of question, so feel free. It doesn't always have to just be Jets related. Boy, Green Buffalo. What mics do you use for streaming? First off, we'll go to Buffalo's, which is a lot more attractive. If both of our mics were at a bar, you know that kind of scene. This is a little more flashy. This is going to catch some eyes. There's no question. Mine's kind of all reliable because sometimes it doesn't make it all the way on mic. I guess I'll hide your comment just to show it, you know. So it, it, it doesn't flash any colors. It's just black. That There's nothing wrong with that, by the way. I want to make that clear. Uh, but uh, Buffalo, <laughs> let us know on your, uh, on your mic. What kind of mic do we got? 
Yeah, this is the uh, hyper. This is the quadcast. The quadcast hyper S uh, microphone. Love the microphone. Don't ask me what camera yeah. I have because my I need a new camera, so I'll take suggestions on that. But the microphone was definitely uh, a good investment, and the little uh, thingy stuff is is cool. I did have one guy who was so mad. He was like, "Your microphone is so distracting," and like way early on, and like unsubscribed. Wow. So, uh, you know, but I, I think he's recovered. Uh, hopefully, he's doing well wherever I sent him. But yeah, pretty cool microphone. Um, I think it was like. Uh, a little over a hundred bucks, which actually, if you don't, if you're not into tech, that might sound expensive. But for a good microphone, that's actually a, a budget microphone. So yeah. Oh, oh, well, it's, it's super reasonable for me. By the way, I'll throw this so you guys can see it because mine doesn't float like buffaloes. Uh, this is a, a Blue Yeti mic. I actually have. Uh, for p people who don't know, I've got this, which is supposed to be oh. some level of like at my you know mic where I could be hanging it and bringing it down mm -hmm. like I do in radio. So that's what we do. We have a mic that's hanging, like, you know, wrestling style in the old days where it comes down from the ceiling. And I'm like, hey, everybody, what are we doing tonight? And I'm like holding it. So I kind of have that in the radio world. So I do have this nice, beautiful, like crane-esque style that I could use. But I don't know, just the having it on the chair and just kind of the, the table rather is kind of looking around and doing it that uh, uh, yeah, Ken Kennedy. Thank you, FM. That's 100% <laughs> what I was going to say. But I didn't know if anyone would get the reference. So I, I immediately stopped. But FM, you immediately got the wrestling reference of bringing down the mic and talking in that way. But yes, Ken Kennedy, for those at home, that's that's hilarious. But I will tell you on the camera, and this is great, uh, Logitech. Again, I'm not getting any extra pay, by the way, for these uh, for our reads of these microphones or cameras, although they can always hook us up. Wink. But uh, yeah, actually, this Logitech camera my uh, fiance got me because when I first started my YouTube channel, uh, Buffalo, I just used the camera off the laptop. And me I was too. just kind of sitting Awful. in front and using it. And it was Looks terrible. like you're in a darkness retreat. <laughs> it, it darkness retreat, uh, like on accident. And then it just <laughs> pixelated and it looked like garbage. I was on my couch. I, it was terrible. So I would highly recommend that one. That one was somewhere in the $100, $150 range, somewhere in that ballpark. And it's USB friendly. That would be a way. And I hope that we can kind of use this because I've heard a lot of nice comments this week. I heard it from Green Bean way back in the day. I've heard it from a few other uh, Vinny and the Jets, I think, was another one that recently said it, that we have sometimes inspired other people that are just Jet fans to create their own channels. Baby, I mean, how do you start? Turn on the camera, get in front of yeah. it, share your opinion, share your takes, and you have to start somewhere. So that would be my big suggestion uh, to anybody that's out there that may think about doing this, that may think that they want to do this. First off, there's nothing really special about what I'll speak for myself. I don't want to throw it all over Buffalo here, but there's nothing really special that we're doing here. I mean, I've set up a, a mini studio here. We we invested a mic, which, again, will range anywhere from 100 to 150 bucks. That, that's where you're doing it right. Again, you kind of get what you pay for. You can sometimes get good deals, but somewhere in the 100 to 150 dollar range is what you should be spending on your mic. And then camera, same sort of ballpark, depending on what you could get. Again, the USB one works out great for me and gives me a good quality. But yeah, guys, you can all do whatever you want to do. Open up a YouTube channel. I always thought it was too late. I went and look at Buffalo, who said he's only been doing his for the, the near one year anniversary. I started in the 2020 year. Horrible choice, by the way, in the Adam Gase year, but that's neither here nor there. Yeah, I started, I started right before started the in, draft class, so I, I had it made in the shade, man. I had four draft picks see, to talk about. <laughs> and now you're like, see, I started and it immediately happened. Coincidence, I think not. That's kind of where Buffalo <laughs> is going here for me i started in crap and they're like maybe you should stop and maybe i should have listened quite frankly a couple <laughs> years ago when all of that started but i always the reason why it took me so long to get on youtube anyway i had done a podcast for a long time was like ah it's too late like everyone's on youtube now like what, what would i be doing and eventually i just did it and now look where i'm at and i'm not even half of where where buffalo's at with his subscribers so again all of you guys can do whatever the heck you want to do it is paul is a pandemic youtube baby that's right. That's the best way I've ever heard it described. I may crochet that and put it on a pillow behind on my desk. So I really appreciate that. Thank you, Kevin underscore Chata, uh, for that. But uh, that would be my uh, missive to each and every one of you. If you guys want to start some content or, or just continue to support. I know some people don't like it in front of camera and stuff. So we're kind of PSA to end the show. But uh, I really love all you guys. So, guys, feel free. If you are intrigued to get this started, I will say that I reached out to a few people, the OG Jets content creators, and asked them tips and tricks on mics and cameras and everything. And they were super, they were super willing to answer all my crazy questions. So I hope 
uh, you guys could do the same and jump into my DMs wherever, and I'll try to help you wherever I can. But, uh, yeah, this is uh, this has been awesome. And obviously, Buffalo's taken off. He's a superstar now. Quite frankly, I don't even know how much longer the show's going to last, quite frankly. He's got the Joe Blewett thing going on. He just got signed to a multi-year deal. The Jets X Factory said, you know, it's kind of peanuts. It's kind of just pays for the gas on one of his crazy cars at his mansion. But nonetheless, <laughs> uh, we're trying to appreciate every one of these episodes for as long as they last. Yeah, if you sure. jump jump in. Get, get on your get on your phones and, and talk Jets people. Like I, I think I always I don't like the label of like a Jets content creator. I'm like, dude, it's not I get I get home from work, I talk about the Jets just like everybody else. I just press record. It's not it's not that serious. Like yeah. <laughs> I mean, we're the same conversation instead of having this conversation. And it's interesting too because so many of us I think started because we don't live in um, New Jersey, Long Island, or, or New York City. So to right. to get in touch with other Jets fans, you know, it's you, like Jake's in, it's true. in Houston, and you were you were up in uh, Boston, right, for a while. Area weren't you up in New England? Correct. Yeah. So I've, I was all yeah. over the East Coast. I was not close. Yeah. So to your point of our way to connect, yes. Yeah. So it's, but it's it's a fun ride. The Jets Jets on Jets are the online fan base is so undefeated, man. Like we're not, other teams are not like this. Even the, like the Bills, like I'll go to other teams like YouTube channels and stuff. First, their content is all trash. Other so other teams like just other teams fan content. It's bad. Like it really is. And then the the traction and the fan base is an in interaction and um, how realistic people are and how much our fans know. Like there's been there's been things where like I'll make a video like super quick and then someone will like comment and be like oh and they found this like piece of information that like makes my bit so it's that's what makes it fun is our fans our fans as crazy as we are like we they know the team they know the game and the the jets actually jets fan base actually has some of the most informed and believe it or not real like if you step outside and you'll go go see like what the other teams are saying like the players that their team is going to sign and how many games they're going to win jets fan base uh, online makes this very for the most part uh, a fun a fun thing to do so appreciate you guys yeah, and I will say in closing that Jet fans have kind of ruined it for me, to be honest with you, because like when I saw what the community is, again, I am an overall NFL fan and I do I host overall NFL shows. So thank you to Heavy for putting me in a position to do that where we have big time NFL people on. And I'm just the colorful host. So I, I know about the overall NFL, but I'm not as deep into the communities like we are here with the Jets. So when I see Buffalo Jet fan, Jake Asman, all the, again, I'm going to miss people, so I don't want to start naming people, but you, you go through this community and go, wow, we have everybody. And then I just randomly deep dive into Houston Texans, and I'm just like, it's just like tumbleweeds. And I'm like looking around like, what the hell? I mean, I get we're New York Jets, but I look at a couple random communities, same thing with YouTube, try to deep dive in, and I assume – that because I've seen it with the Jets, I'm like, oh, everywhere must be like this. And then I go to other ones, and you're right, Buffalo. I'm looking, I'm like, what the hell is going on over <laughs> here? So uh, we are quite fortunate, I would say. And uh, Jet fans are, I just saw that comment come in, that Jet fans are super smart, and uh, they push back on things, which is nice. They're well-informed. I think that's a really good way to put it. But, yeah, so uh, people should really appreciate what we have here. That's uh, that's for sure. That's for sure. No doubt. No that's doubt. Amazing. Good stuff, man. All right, Buffalo. Well, uh, you know, I already tried to do some of that plugging for you earlier, right before you came on, but uh, who better to do it than, well, Buffalo Jet fan himself. So you had the week off your day job. So we've already seen a bunch of great content with some great uh, guests so far already this week. Set us up. What is up for the rest of this week? And also, uh, obviously, looking ahead to next week with the NFL comment. And obviously, the show will flip to uh, your channel next week, next Wednesday. Yeah, well, nothing's bigger than next Wednesday at 9 p.m. So come by there. Um, yes. Tomorrow I'm hanging out with Zach Rosenblatt at 11. Friday I'm hanging out with Ian from Jets Central. Um, nice. And, uh, yeah, I have my, a mock off-season 3.0 coming out the weekend. So Ooh. fun stuff, fun stuff. And, again, excited uh, that Connor Rogers did actually respond to my random uh, email and Connor Rogers uh, of SNY in the Badlands and super famous draft guy uh, with really cool hair is going to come on after the Combine to break some stuff down. So I'm excited to chat. I'm really excited to chat with him because he's uh, he's just really damn good at his job. 100%. He's a handsome devil, too. Like yeah. I, I saw there was a comment earlier. I think I threw it up on the screen that most uh, Jets content creators wear something. You have the beanie eye of the hat. Connor Rogers doesn't have to contain that beast. I, I mean, he, he's got he's that got Johnny it, Bravo. He, again, if, if I had that kind of lettuce, I, I would have never worn a hat. But unfortunately, I just kind of got like a, a you know a, a mop up top here that is completely unattractive. So I've been trying to hide it my entire life. Uh, Connor Rogers, though, uh, he, he's got a beautiful uh, set of lettuce up there that he can uh, 
kind of throw around, which is uh, really nice. So looking forward to that. Well, Buffalo, another fun show. Thanks to all the fans uh, for tuning in. That was awesome. Again, Buffalo's YouTube channel is down below. He's getting closer and closer to that 10K mark, which is unbelievable. After just a year, look at this young Jets prodigy here. Like for Pete's sake, so show your support. Like the videos, hit subscribe, and uh, we'll see you next time. Thanks for tuning in, everybody. We'll see you.